So another hot topic, cross-sector partnerships. All the work that we're talking about and showing you today is uh, really grounded in cross-sector partnerships. Um, so what makes a good cross-sector partnership? Um, I would say that being clear about what your outcomes are and what your values are is really important. Um, when you bring cross-sector partners together to think about improving a neighborhood in particular, generally you're going to find that everyone at the table has a similar vision. They want to they want to increase economic outcomes for the residents who live there. They want to improve the physical space. They want to make it safer and cleaner and more livable. Um, those outcomes are really clear and if, if you start with thinking about those together it really helps. But I think the biggest um, stumbling block when it comes to cross-sector partnerships is not understanding what each organization or each person brings to the table and to be clear about that up front. So if the city government is at the table, what do they actually bring? What are the other people assuming they're bringing? Be clear, people need to be clear about that. So your role as an artist is to ask those questions. You know, be clear about what you as an artist can also bring to that table, what your skill sets are. Most folks are gonna assume you make things. They may not understand that you have incredible problem solving skills or that you have deep relationships in a neighborhood with the people who live there. What do those things um, do in terms of getting the project moved forward? So if everyone at the table can really lay it down and say this is what I can bring and this is what I can't bring, it breaks down assumptions right from the beginning and it helps move the project along in a really much um, more cohesive, um, honest way. So when we think about the traditional community development field, um, you know, we're looking at community development corporations, community development finance institutions, organizations that have made really large investments over time in neighborhoods. One of the things that's important to understand about community development corporations and CDFIs is that they actually have long-term relationships with places. Um, and they're pretty consistent over time, whereas in government, you know, pol politics change, the, you know, the shifting sands, and so there may be an in and an out in a place. But with community development organizations, they're really working in the same place for a very long time. Um, and they're up against these same problems for a long time. Um, what we've found is that by bringing in artists and arts organizations to the work, they've actually been able to approach some of these sticky issues from a different angle. Um, and actually from an asset-based angle. So how do we create safety in a place where people don't feel safe? Well, let's do a fun event and bring people out of their homes and take ownership of that space. Let's not just think about the physical environment and maybe fixing the sidewalks or putting up more street lights, but let's really enliven it with people. Then what happens is they find that those people that show up for the events actually have ideas about how to create better neighborhoods and they are able to access that information and use the residents as experts in the places that they live. And that has actually really been, um, it sounds really simple, but it actually has really shifted things in terms of the way the CDCs we're working with are working in their neighborhoods and engaging their residents. So um, when the artists come in, they're really able to kind of like create those moments for residents to get engaged, and it becomes an asset-based strategy versus, um, versus sort of like a problem-solving strategy. Although it's still a problem-solving strategy, but it's thinking about um, bringing people together in an asset-based way. So when you're working in a cross-sector partnership and you've articulated all your values and you've kind of talked about what you each can bring to the table, the next step is really thinking about how to put together a contract or a memorandum of understanding that clearly articulates what those things are. Um, what we've found over the years, and this was in my past, my past job in arts and culture um, in city government, was that these moments of actually sitting and writing these things down and actually making it legal really codified and clarified uh, each person or each organization's role in the work. Um, now you may not have to take it as far as going to hire a lawyer to do this, but it's really important to write it all down and have everybody sign it together. Um, so, you know, articulate what your role is in the project, what resources you bring to the table, and the timeline on which you're all going to work. And that really makes a big difference in terms of um, having a project be successful or having it, um, having it stall out. So when we, look, when we look back at some of the other important key elements of creative placemaking in LISC neighborhoods, we really have to put racial equity front and center. Um, so when we're working with artists and community development corporations in our neighborhoods, we're really 
looking for the residents to be in charge of the design of the project or to be at least driving the project. Um, how do you do that? How do you make sure the residents are at the center of the work? Um, you work with community organizers to really knock on doors and figure out who, whose voices are, are not being heard at traditional planning meetings. Um, you advertise in different ways. You, you make a process that allows people to participate. Maybe instead of a community meeting, you train 20 people in the neighborhood to go do community meetings in people's um, kitchens or living rooms after before work. Really, you have to dig deep on this stuff. And if in the end or in the process, you're finding that you know, the people that are showing up to engage with you don't necessarily represent the neighborhood, particularly in terms of its demographics, you need to go to the next step. You need to keep trying, and you need to get the partners involved that are going to get you there. Um, and you need to not make assumptions about why people didn't come. So really, I, I, I stress that. Just really push yourselves to make sure that as you're working in community, that you are including and you're being inclusive because the residents who live in, the, in neighborhoods are the ones who are the experts.